Registrations are now open for our ACCA Performance Management exam course. Get access to our comprehensive playlist of over 46 hours of content, including concept videos covering the entire syllabus, exam videos explaining how those concepts are tested in the exam, and question videos to help you with exam practice. Subscribe to one of our packages, the smallest package. For $10, you get access to the entire course for 7 days. Or you can subscribe to one of our longer term packages. For more information, check out the links in the description below. And now, on to the video. Hello everyone, and how are you all doing today? So today, we'll be doing yet another question for the ACCA Management Accounting exam. We're going to be doing another practice question from the ACCA website itself. So, on their website, they have a past paper specimen exam on their CB portal based on the June 2014 exam, which covers section A and section B, like the whole exam. But they've also released a set of extra multiple choice questions for section B, three sets specifically, called the extra MTQs. And you can find these easily by Googling ACCA F2 past paper extra MTQ is the first link, right? So in this video, we're going to be doing the third set of these questions, question number three, which is of course on our favorite topic, which is variances. And it's a very commonly tested topic in the exam as a whole and in section B. So without any further ado, let's get into the question. As always, we'll start with the requirements. So it's a fill in the blank style of question where we our analysis skills and calculation of variances will be put to the test. So it says, select the appropriate word, phrases, or numbers to correctly complete the commentary on the last month's results. It says, Prancer course using, uses standard dash costing. And always check what the options are. So either it's absorption costing or marginal costing. So what's the difference between absorption and marginal costing? The go-to difference that we must always first look for is the fixed variances. If only the fixed overhead expenditure variance is included, then it's a marginal costing question. If more than that is included, then it's an absorption costing question. If we can't tell if they're not given, then we look at whether the company is using profit or contribution in its calculation for the sales volume variance. In here, in the question, we can see that we have the fixed overhead expenditure variance, but we also have the fixed overhead volume variance as well. So this is an absorption costing question. Furthermore, we can see that they're using profit with the sales volume calculation. So that's another hint that this is an absorption costing question. So absorption costing. And there was just half a mark for this. In the last month, actual selling price was, and we need to specify whether it was higher than, equal to, or lower than the standard. So let's see what information we have. Uh, we have our standard cost card up above, and we have our standard cost operating statement. So standard cost card obviously is giving us the budgeted selling price. We do have in our sales uh, data, the sales price variance and it's favorable. So what do we know from the formula of the sales price variance? If it's favorable, that means that the actual price at which we sold our products uh, was more than what our standard price was. That's why it's favorable because it's a good thing, right? So our actual selling price was higher than the standard and one mark for this. It says actual units were, again, but this time it does, doesn't restrict it to more than, less than, or equal than. Now we need to also select a quantity, 400, 1,200, etc. cetera. So one, were they more or less than budgeted number of units, and how much more or less were they? So well, we have our sales price variance. Now we have to deal with the sales volume variance as well. So we're comparing our actual units to our budgeted units. How can we find the budgeted units? Well, we have the budgeted profit, which is 600,000, and the profit per unit as per the standard cost card, which is the budgeted profit per unit, which is 50. So if we take out our calculator, 600,000 divided by 50 gives us 12,000. Our budgeted units were 12,000. And we need to compare these to the actual uh, units. So, well, they've given us the sales volume variance and it's adverse, meaning by default that the actual units will be 
less than the budgeted units because the variance itself is adverse. How much less? Well, it says the standard profit on actual sales, meaning this $50 per unit into our actual number of units sold is 540,000. So let's find out how much that was. 540,000 divided by 50, 10,800, right? So 10,800 minus 12,000, we are 1,200 less than the, uh, what do you say, the budgeted units. And of course, if we multiply this by 50, we get our 60,000 adverse sales volume variance because remember the formula for the sales volume variance. It's our actual unit sold minus the budgeted unit sold into the standard profit. So you could have just put in the numbers there that 60,000 adverse is equal to actual unit sold minus budgeted unit sold into 50 and we'll find the budgeted units and actual units using these numbers. Anyway, so it's 1,200 less than budgeted and this was for two marks. And actual sales revenue was, and we have to give our actual sales revenue. So we need to be careful here. How do we find the actual sales revenue using our operating statement? Because this is a somewhat common question that they ask. So we have our standard profit on actual sales, which is basically our standard profit per unit multiplied by the actual unit sold, right? And we know our actual unit sold are 10,800. But what would that make our standard actual revenue? How do we get to that? Well, first we can start use this as our starting point, standard profit on actual sales. This is the number of units 10,800, which we already calculated into 50. We can find the standard revenue on actual sales by simply instead multiplying 10,800 by 150. So 10,800 by 150. If we had not calculated the 10,800 previously, we would simply take this amount 540,000 divided by 50 to get the number of units and then multiply by 150, right? So we get 1.62 million, which is our standard selling price of 150 into the 10,800 actual units. But what would our actual revenue be? Well, to account for that, we need to incorporate our sales price variance because that takes in, the sales volume variance has already been accounted for based on the fact that we started with this number and the sales volume variance has already been accounted for. We still need to account the sales price variance to get our final result for revenue. So the 20,000 favorable, 20,000 favorable meaning our actual revenue, our prices were higher than expected, our revenue was higher than expected. So instead of 1.62 million, we made 20,000 more than that in revenue, which is around 1.64 million. So we just adjust for the sales price variance to this amount. We convert, find the standard revenue on actual sales and then add the sales price variance if it's favorable or deduct it if it's adverse. So we get 1.64 million and that was again for two marks so the next question we have is uh, uh, fill in the blank for production was more or less than and we have to give the number of units budgeted so what will we go through for this particular part well now it's production so we're no longer dealing with sales we're going to move on to our cost variances so what are we going to look at there's the material usage variance possibly the labor efficiency variance but the easiest bet here for us is our fixed overhead volume variance because it directly compares our actual production with our budgeted production and it multiplies that by the OR. So if we produce more than expected, we would expect our uh, variance to be favorable because the fixed costs are remaining the same but we're producing more than expected. And if we produce less than expected, we'd expect it to be adverse. Now this is adverse, 2000. So automatically that means the answer should be 100 units less. But why is that the case? Let's look at our calculation. So the formula for our fixed overhead volume variance, so fixed overhead volume variance is basically our actual units produced minus the budgeted units produced into the OAR per unit. And we know from our question that this is 2000 adverse. But as we already know the answer, since it's adverse and there was only one option for less, we didn't have to do this. This is just purely to illustrate to you guys 
uh, how it works. So we have this minus 2000. OAR per unit we can get from our standard cost card. We know that it's fixed overhead is $20 per unit. So this is 20. If we take the 20 to the other side, so it's multiplied at this side, if we divide minus 2000 by 20, minus 2000 divided by 20, we get, oops, sorry, minus 2000 divided by 20. Oh, right, my mistake, 2000 minus divided by 20, there we go. What, <laughs> let me just reset the calculator. Okay, 2000 minus divided by 20, we get 100 minus 100, meaning that the actual units minus the budgeted units is effectively minus 100, meaning the actual units are 100 less than the budgeted units for this to be minus 100, right? Okay. Fine, your materials cause the biggest cost variances where a decision to pay more or less than the standard price. So material price variance basically. It's favorable meaning we paid less than the standard price, right? Favorable material price variance means we paid less and that's a good thing from a company standpoint which is why the variance is favorable. So less than the standard price but only 0.5 marks for this uh, resulted in the company using and how many kg now? 320 or kg more than the original, more than the flexed and so on and so forth, right? That's the question. So materials usage variances at words, meaning we used more than we expected. But is it based on more than the original or more than the flexed? What are we effectively saying here? Original means budgeted, flexed means standard. And what do we know? That variances are based on actual versus standard except in the case of sales volume variance and some fixed variances right other all the other variances the default is actual versus standard so we're comparing the actual to the standard or in this case the flexed so we used since the variance is worth 320 kg more than flexed if we had picked original then that meant we were comparing to budget and that would be wrong okay so just for exam references flexed means standard original means the budgeted amount Okay, so yeah, we're done. We got our 10 marks and hopefully that helped clarify these things for you guys. And I hope you benefited from this video. I'll see you guys next time.